Well, for my Florida friends and those that uh, know us from Florida, we just had a wonderful visit with Jim and Melody Feast. Uh, Jim was the music minister for Southside for a, a period of time that uh, he really blessed us with his, both his playing of his trumpet and his leading the music and leading our choir. And uh, it was good to see them again. Uh, they're gone to the Cove for a uh, conference with uh, Mr. Lutzer and uh, know that they'll have a great conference there as he preaches. We're in the book of Daniel and uh, it's the fewest of the words of the four top major prophets. Uh, only 12,100 words and uh, so a relatively short book. And we certainly see that it's from 605 to 536 BC. Uh, it's taken from uh, his family, taken from his culture, and taken to Babylon as one of the chosen uh, young, men, young men of the Israeli faith and brought into Babylon where they tried to conform him uh, to their culture. But Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile himself with the king's choice food or with the wine which he drank. So he sought permission from the commander of the officials that he might not defile himself. Now God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the commander of the officials. You might be saying, why did Daniel make such a fuss over food? Well, it wasn't like us deciding not to take pickled beets at the uh, most recent potluck supper. This was a command of God. This was a, something that God wanted the Jews to follow was dietary principles. And uh, they were commands, not requests. And so Daniel was determined that he was not going to be conformed to the Babylonian society, but rather that he was going to continue to follow God's commands. So when he stood up uh, for the fact that he wanted to be obedient to God, notice what happened. God granted him favor and compassion. Now notice which one came first. Daniel's obedience came before the fact that God honored him then with both seeing compassion and favor from God because of what Daniel had done. It's a good lesson there for us that we should be obedient and then expect God's blessings, not ask for God's blessings and then be obedient. But we should be obedient first, whether we get his blessings or whether we don't. But you know what? When we're obedient, he almost always blesses us, but it always follows our obedience. Let's take a look at the next verse. Please test your servant for 10 days and let us be given some vegetables to eat and water to drink. Daniel was firm in his convictions, but he wasn't obstinate. He wasn't ugly. He actually reasoned with those that had him in captivity. And he was willing to trust God. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? He not only reasoned with those that were holding him in captivity, but he trusted God for the results of any test that would be put about God's dietary rules. I wonder how many times we should just trust God when we obey him in morality, ethics, or whatever the issue might be. If we would just trust him, that he'll take care of us and that we can be tested in those areas if we'll just be obedient to him. Now let's look at the next. As for these four youths, God gave them knowledge, intelligence, in every branch of literature and wisdom. Daniel even understood all kinds of visions and dreams. As is so often when we begin to really follow God's commands and we're obedient and we're reasonable people, God wants to bless us. And very often he does. And he did these four youths. Uh, he gave them special abilities to learn the materials the Babylonians were giving them. But they were living for God, not for the Babylonians. And it tells us very clearly here uh, that he was a prophet. Sometimes prophets were also called seers because they could see visions. Now, in the New Testament, we've got to be careful. Sometimes the seers are false seers. They make up uh, answers and make up visions uh, for their own prophet. But 
here in this case, God is already revealing that Daniel is going to have special abilities to prophesy. And very often his prophecies will come from seeing and understanding visions. Let's look at our last two verses. The king talked with them, and out of them all not one was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. So they entered the king's personal service. As for every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king consulted them, he found them ten times better than all of the magicians and conjurers who were in all of his realm. The king saw a difference in Daniel. And my friends, when we're obedient to God and we do the things that he says to do, we trust in him, people will see a difference in us. Now, in the case of Daniel, he was 10 times better than any of the rest of the people that the king talked to. But maybe that's not going to be his 10 times factor for us. But it will always be seen different if we live for God. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.